Hey everyone, and welcome to the Deep Dive. We're diving into AI today, but not just any AI. Oh yeah, AI is a big topic these days. Lots of different angles. What are we focusing on? AI that can create. Yeah. AI that can make things, not just, you know, follow instructions. Ah, generative AI. Okay, now we're talking. I'm excited to see where this goes. Me too. And to guide us, we're going to be taking a deep dive into a presentation by Dr. Nellie Deutsch. Now, she knows her stuff, right? I mean, she's been integrating tech into learning for over 30 years, so she's seen it all. That's right, over 30 years. So her perspective on this is going to be uh, super valuable, I think. Definitely. She's been on the front lines of this for decades, so her insights are going to be spot on. Okay, so to kick things off, Dr. Deutsch starts by making this really interesting distinction between traditional AI and generative AI. Yeah, because it's easy to lump it all together. Right. But there are some key differences that are important to understand. Exactly. And she uses this analogy, um, like those those plates you see at a diner, you know, mass produced. They all look the same. Okay, I'm listening. Those plain white plates. Gets the job done, but not exactly a work of art. Yeah. So she's saying that traditional AI is kind of like that. It's standardized. And generative AI is more like... Uh, Maybe like a handmade piece of pottery or something. Unique and expressive. Exactly. It's about creativity and personalized expression. Like, you know, think about an artist crafting a one-of-a-kind piece. Ah, I see where she's going with this. So generative AI is about creating something new, not just, you know, following a set of rules. Right. It's AI that can think outside the box, come up with new ideas and solutions. Which, honestly, is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. We're talking about machines that can be creative. I know, right? It's wild. And Dr. Deutsch gets into some really interesting examples of how this could change learning. Like, how would this work in a classroom setting? Is she talking about robots teaching kids? Not quite robots, but she talks about using AI to... Um, to create these customized learning paths for students. Okay, so tailoring the education experience to each individual student, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and not just the learning paths, but the assessments too and the feedback they get. So it's not like everyone gets the same tests and the same feedback. It's truly personalized to their needs and learning style. Exactly, and she even takes it a step further and talks about AI generating different audio tracks within the same lecture hall. W wait, what? Different audio tracks, like everyone's hearing something different. I don't get it. Yeah, so imagine this, okay? One student could be listening to a lecture with explanations tailored to, you know, their specific learning style. Okay, okay, I'm starting to see it. Yeah. And another student might be getting real-time translations in their native language. Yes, so it could make learning way more accessible and inclusive. Wow. That could be huge for students who are struggling or who learn differently. Right, and Dr. Deutsch doesn't stop there. She highlights all these other generative AI tools that could change learning. Oh, so this isn't just a theoretical thing. There are actual tools out there that are doing this. Like what? Well, she mentions AI powered podcast generators that could create like personalized audio content. No way. Yeah. Like a podcast just for me based on what I want to learn. That's incredible. I know, right? And then for visual learners, she talks about image generators that can bring concepts to life. Ah, so instead of just reading about history, you could see it almost like you were there. Yeah, like that. And even create art based on what they're learning. That is so cool. It would make learning so much more engaging. And she goes on to talk about AI for language learning, research, storytelling, and even like um, personalized exercises. So we're talking about a whole suite of AI tools that can cater to different learning styles and needs. That's impressive. It is. And it really gets you thinking about the potential of generative AI to make education more engaging and effective for all students. I mean, it sounds like a dream come true, right? Mm -hmm. But there's got to be some downsides, too. Nothing's perfect. You're right. It can't all be sunshine and roses. And Dr. Dosh does acknowledge some of the challenges that come with all of this. Like what? What are some of the things we need to be cautious about? Well, for one, teachers are going to need a lot of training and support to, you know, to use these tools effectively. Right, because you can't just hand someone a fancy new tool and expect them to know what to do with it. Exactly. And then there's the issue of the digital divide. Not all students have equal access to technology, so that's a big hurdle. That's a really important point. We can't let this technology exacerbate existing inequalities. Absolutely. And then there's the question of, over-reliance on these tools. Like, AI can be a powerful tool, but it can't replace human interaction. Teachers are still essential. I mean, they're the ones who guide students, who foster critical thinking, who create that supportive learning environment. Totally. And they inspire a love of learning, which is something AI just can't do. So it's about finding the right balance. 
using AI to enhance education, but not letting it take over. Exactly. And that's something we'll need to be mindful of as we move forward. We'll talk more about that in the next part of our deep dive. Finding that balance, that's the key. And, you know, it's interesting because Dr. Deutsch also talks about this concept of blended learning. Okay, blended learning. So, like, mixing in-person instruction with digital stuff. Exactly. Using both in-person and online. And she sees generative AI as a way to really, like, supercharge this blended approach. Okay, I'm intrigued. How so? Well, imagine a classroom where students are working on you know, those personalized learning paths we talked about, but they still have a teacher there to guide them. Uh, so it's not just about replacing teachers with AI. It's about using AI to make the teacher's job even more effective. Right. And and to make the learning experience more engaging and effective for the student. I like it. It's like the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Personalized learning powered by AI, but still with the human touch. Exactly. And Dr. Deutsch has been doing this blended learning thing for a while, so she's got some great advice for teachers who are just starting out. Oh, perfect. Because this can all seem a bit overwhelming, right? Like, where do you even begin? Well, she says, start small. Don't try to do everything at once. Pick one AI tool. Try it out for like five minutes a day. Okay, I can handle that. Five minutes, no problem. Build it into your routine. Exactly. Baby steps. And then, you know, as you get more comfortable, you can start incorporating it more and more. Makes sense. And she also talks about the importance of professional development, right? Keeping up with all the new stuff. Yes. She recommends dedicating like 10 minutes a day to learning something new about AI and education. 10 minutes a day. Okay, I can definitely commit to that. It all adds up over time. Right. And it doesn't have to be this big formal thing. Just read an article, watch a video, chat with a colleague. That's a good point. Sometimes the best learning happens informally, just by sharing ideas and experiences with others. Exactly. And speaking of sharing, Dr. Deutsch actually highlights a few specific generative AI tools that she's been using in her own teaching. Oh, I was hoping she'd get into specifics. Like, what tools is she actually using in the classroom? Well, one that she's really excited about is um, ChatGPT's new conversational feature. Have you heard about that one? I have, yeah. I've heard it's amazing for language learning, like having a personal tutor right in your pocket. Right. You can practice speaking and writing in different languages, and it gives you personalized feedback. That's incredible. It would have been a game changer when I was learning Spanish in high school. Yeah. So much easier than those boring textbooks. Up the right. And for those of us who aren't language whizzes, she talks about these really cool literature review tools. Literature review tools. Okay, those would have been a lifesaver in college. I spent so much time in the library researching for papers. Right. But these tools can help you find the most relevant sources, summarize key findings, all that good stuff. Ah, so instead of getting lost in a sea of information, students can focus on actually analyzing and understanding it. Precisely. And for those visual learners out there, Dr. Deutsch is a big fan of image generators. Image generators. Okay, now those sound fun. What can you do with those? Well, she uses them to help students visualize complex concepts or to explore different cultures or even to create their own artwork. So it's not just about consuming information. It's about using AI to actually create something new and exciting. Exactly. And she also mentions story generators, which could be great for developing those creative writing skills. Ah, uh, that would be perfect for elementary school kids. They love telling stories. Absolutely. And she talks about these activity generators that can create personalized exercises and assessments for each student. Oh, that's smart. It makes sure everyone's working at the right level and getting the challenge they need. Right. And then there are these AI-powered bots that can provide personalized feedback 24-7. It's like having a virtual study buddy that's always available. Pretty cool. Right. And to keep all of this organized, Dr. Deutsch uses something called Moodle, which is a learning management system. So it's like a central hub where teachers can put all these AI-powered resources and activities for their students. Exactly. It's like having a digital learning ecosystem personalized for each student. Pretty amazing. It is. But with all this focus on AI, it's easy to forget about the human element. What does Dr. Deutsch say about the role of the teacher in all of this? Well, she's very clear that teachers are still absolutely essential, even with all these fancy AI tools. Phew. I was starting to worry teachers might become obsolete in this AI-powered future. Not a chance. She actually argues that the teacher's role becomes even more important. I see what you mean. The teacher becomes like a guide, helping students navigate this new world of personalized learning. Right. And they're still the ones who foster critical thinking, 
creativity, and all those important human skills that AI can't replicate. So it's a partnership, really. Teachers and AI working together to create the best possible learning experience for each student. Exactly. And that takes us back to the importance of training and professional development for teachers. So they can learn how to use these tools effectively and understand the potential benefits and challenges. Right. Dr. Deutsch even suggests checking the tools carefully before recommending them to students and colleagues. Okay, that makes sense. There are so many tools out there, it's hard to know which ones are worth your time. And she also recommends taking some free online courses to stay up to date on the latest developments in AI in education. Always be learning, right? Especially in a field that's changing so rapidly. Exactly. And she reminds us to watch YouTube videos by actual educators, not just by companies trying to sell you something. Good point. You got to be discerning about your sources these days. There's a lot of hype out there. So true. So, yeah, she's got a lot of great practical advice for teachers who are interested in incorporating AI into their teaching. This is all super helpful. And I know she has a lot of experience with the whole blended learning approach. Does she talk about any of the challenges that come with that? Oh, definitely. She's very honest about the fact that it's not always easy. Like what what are some of the things that teachers should be prepared for? Well, one of the big ones is the lack of transparency around a lot of these AI tools. We don't always know how they work, where their data comes from, or even how they make decisions. That's a little unsettling, actually, especially when we're talking about tools that are being used to educate our kids. Right. It raises some important questions about accountability and trust. Definitely. We need to be having serious conversations about these ethical considerations as AI becomes more prevalent in education. Absolutely. And then there's the issue of teacher overload. It can be really time consuming to integrate these new tools effectively. Teachers already have so much on their plates. We don't want to add to their burden. Exactly. And then there's the need for technical support, both for teachers and students. Oh, yeah, because things are going to go wrong. It's inevitable with technology. It happens. And then, of course, there are the privacy concerns, especially around student data. That's a big one. We need to make sure student data is being protected and used responsibly. Absolutely. So there are definitely some challenges to consider, but Dr. Deutsch also sees a lot of opportunities in blended learning, especially when you add AI to the mix. Okay, I'm curious, what kind of opportunities? Well, for one, it can make learning more flexible and accessible. Students can learn from anywhere at their own pace. Ah, so it breaks down those barriers of time and location? That's huge. Right. And it can make learning more personalized and engaging with those AI tutors and personalized feedback systems we talked about. It's like having a customized learning experience tailored to your specific needs. Exactly. And she also talks about the potential for increased collaboration and connection, even in an online setting. I guess that makes sense. Oh. With the right tools, you can create a real sense of community, even if everyone's learning remotely. Exactly. And she sees a lot of potential for using AI to improve communication and feedback between teachers and students. Like, how so? Give me an example. Well, imagine AI tools that can analyze student work and provide personalized feedback. That would free up teachers' time to focus on other things, like mentoring and curriculum development. Oh, I see. So it's not about replacing the teacher's role, but about making their time more efficient and impactful. Precisely. And she also talks about using AI to create more inclusive and equitable learning environments. Like those real-time translation tools we talked about earlier. Exactly. And things like closed captioning and other accessibility features that can benefit students with disabilities. That's so important. We need to make sure everyone has the opportunity to learn and succeed. Absolutely. And that's why it's so crucial to think critically about how we're using these tools and to be mindful of those ethical considerations we talked about earlier. It's not just about the technology itself. It's about how we use it and who benefits from it. Exactly. We need to be intentional and responsible in our approach to AI in education. Well said. Now, I know Dr. Deutsch is a big believer in reflection. Does she talk about how to incorporate reflection into these AI-enhanced learning experiences? Oh, absolutely. She even recommends a specific tool called Riff AI Bot, which asks you these thought-provoking questions to help you reflect on your learning. Oh, that's cool. I'm always looking for new ways to get my students to think critically about their own learning process. Right. And she also emphasizes the importance of creating opportunities for students to share their reflections with each other. So it's not just about individual reflection, but about building a community of learners who can learn from each other's experiences. Exactly. And speaking of sharing, she actually shared a pretty funny story in her presentation about an AI pronunciation tool that, well, 
didn't quite get it right. Oh, I love a good AI fail story. What happened? Well, she was demonstrating a tool called Elsa, which is supposed to help you improve your pronunciation. She typed in the word nice, but the tool kept pronouncing it as noose. Oh, no, that's hilarious. But also a little worrying, I guess. Right. It just goes to show that even the most advanced AI tools aren't perfect. We need to be aware of their limitations. And not just assume that they're always going to be right. We still need to use our own judgment and critical thinking skills. Exactly. And she also talked about how some of these AI tools can disappear really quickly. She mentioned one called Summary that vanished almost overnight. Oh, wow. And then there's Flip, which used to be called Flipgrid, that got shut down by Microsoft after 12 years. It's a good reminder that the world of technology is constantly changing. we got to be adaptable. So it's not about finding that one perfect tool and sticking with it forever. It's about being open to new possibilities and constantly learning and evolving. Exactly. Yeah. So with all that in mind, what are your thoughts on the future of AI? in education? Do you think it's really going to revolutionize the way we learn? Honestly, I think it has the potential to, but it's up to us to make sure that happens in a way that benefits everyone. I agree. It's an exciting time to be in education, that's for sure. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. Yeah, it is exciting. But it's also a little, uh, I don't know, overwhelming. Like, are we really ready for this? That's a good question. I mean, it is a huge shift. But I think the important thing is to you know, just stay curious and be willing to experiment. That seems to be Dr. Deutsch's approach, right? Yeah. She's super enthusiastic about all of this, but she also, you know, she emphasizes the need to be cautious and thoughtful. Yeah, exactly. It's not about like jumping on every AI bandwagon that comes along. It's about really thinking about how these tools can help us achieve our learning goals. So for teachers who are listening or even parents who are, you know, thinking about how this might impact their kids' education, where do they start? Well, Dr. Deutsch has a really good suggestion. She says... Start experimenting, even if it's just, you know, five or 10 minutes a day. Small steps, right. You don't have to go all in right away. Right. And then, you know, she also talks about reflecting on your experience, like what excites you about these possibilities? What concerns you? What are the potential benefits for you or your students? And she even shares a link to this cool reflection tool called Riff AI Bot. It asks these like thought-provoking questions. Oh, interesting. I'll have to check that out. You know, one thing I've been thinking about is, like, what if we personalize learning not just for students, but for teachers, too? Oh, that's a good point. I hadn't even thought about that. Like, what if AI could help teachers identify their strengths and weaknesses or, you know, their preferred teaching styles? That would be amazing. It could help them become even more effective in the classroom. And maybe even help with teacher burnout, which is, you know, such a big problem these days. Yeah, totally. If AI could take some of the pressure off teachers, that would be a huge win. It all comes back to that idea of using AI to empower both teachers and students, right? Absolutely. And I think that's a perfect way to wrap up this conversation. Yeah. So for our listeners who want to learn more, definitely check out Dr. Deutsch's presentation and the resources she shared. And don't forget to do some reflecting of your own. Think about how generative AI could change the way you learn or teach. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of generative AI. It's been a fascinating conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a blast. And until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep those questions coming.